So welcome to today's podcast. I'm joined by the famous Kate Toon, um, who I'm sure needs no introduction. Thank you very much for joining me, Kate. It's good to finally get you on here. Well, I, you, you built me up now by saying I'm famous because I'm I'm not. But uh, thank you. I'm very happy to be here because I had you on my <laughs> pod long, long ago. And I always yeah. remember that you were the most challenging transcription my transcription person had ever done. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> I still get that to this day. Actually, on your accent, your accent is weirdly changing from what I remember it being the last time. I remember it being slightly odd because you are... You are Scottish, am I right? No, I'm Northern I'm... English. I love that you've just... Got, we've already been talking for 40, 48 seconds. You've already called me odd. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm from England, Northern England. My mum and dad are Geordies. I'm from Manchester. But when I talk to people who are Northern, I go fully Northern. So if I was talking mm-hmm. to someone really posh right now, I mean, you could be posh and Scottish, I guess, but I'd be talking very clipped English and posh. But because I'm talking to you, I've gone into my northern style. So, yes, I apologize. Oh, I mm-hmm. Yeah, well, but your, your accent, obviously, you're based over in Australia. Um, but I think you sound quite American as well. Oh, God, how um, dare you? <laughs> so that's probably, yeah, that's probably the second insult in the first minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's keep but, it yeah. down you can pay insult bingo, <laughs> bingo if you're listening at home <laughs> yeah see how many digs i can get in um, but uh no your your accent is i remember um obviously i see your videos and all that all the time um uh, on facebook and whatnot but yeah i remember talking to you doing the podcast and you're you were adapting your voice to slightly different from what i normally see on your videos so yeah it was strange but a good skill to have Uh, but I was curious because does your parents or something not you're you're always in Scotland around about Christmas time are you not yeah yeah my mum and dad live in Coldstream just on the border so they moved up there Ah. a little while ago and I'm hopefully back in Scotland in June and hopefully seeing you Craig so well I hope to be back again so yeah I try and get back once a year but it's ridiculously expensive you have to sell an organ every time you want to come over because of the flights but I'm trying to get over a bit more because you know elderly parents all that kind of stuff so yeah about once a year but being in Australia and it's probably entering your summer season you're not really wanting to run over here and get into the minus fives in the rain no Um, (laughs) no. I don't I don't miss the weather I must say I you know that's one thing about Australia, those big blue skies seem to breed a bit of optimism into people. People seem to be a little bit more jolly over in Australia, which I love. I think I do personally suffer from that disease they say when you don't get Sad. enough sunshine. Sad um, yeah. seasonal depression, seasonal affected depression, I think it's called. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've got it. Or I'm just a serious sun worshiper. Oh, you're then, just Scottish. So, I think I think that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got digging. Win. Yes. Um, but um, yeah, still plenty more time, plenty more time. But <laughs> um, before we go off into any insults, for anyone who doesn't know Kate, um, so Kate does a whole load of different stuff from speaking at events, winning awards at events, which we're going to talk about. You have your copywriting. Um, what would you call? What would you call? I wouldn't say training course because you've got like this personalized group am i right um, and yeah. i'm not sure the right that. so you've got this uh shall i describe uh, it it's <laughs> that that's kind of what i started with it's a, i guess you call it a community so it's a membership yes. it's also a, a directory and i there's jobs and there is courses and then there's also a big conference so i run a i don't know why i started to do this but i, I run australia's kind of only dedicated copywriting and content marketing conference over here so that's an annual thing as well so that's one side of it and then the other side is all my seo stuff so yeah just because i've got not enough to do do you know what i mean i thought i'd have two businesses <laughs> instead of one yeah, nah, it's all good. But they go, they, they're inter, interlinked, so yeah. you can probably get away with it. Um, but yeah, the, the copywriting one, obviously I've never been involved. I'm not really into copywriting, as I'm probably sure many people can see from my Facebook posts. I'm probably borderline, I've just never been diagnosed dyslexic, but um, yes, yeah, so I always just outsource that side of things. But, you know, from, I know several people who have been part of your 
um, community and speak very highly of it. Um, so I want to talk a bit about that first and foremost. You know, copywriting is one of those things that everybody hates. You know, when it comes to web stuff, everyone I know, all the affiliate marketing guys, cannot find a copywriter for love nor money. So what is going on in here? Is this a place where we can find good, co- you know, cost-effective copywriters? How does it all work? Well, it's funny that you say that because I think obviously, you, you, you know, everyone comes to SEO and, and, and marketing from different backgrounds. And, you know, my background is kind of project management, producing advertising agencies, and then into copywriting and SEO. And I think you, if, I, if I'm right, are more of a kind of a technical web dev background. Is that right? Yeah. I, yeah. So I think, you know, web devs hate copywriting, copywriters hate web devs, they, not web devs, but the development, the techie stuff. And, you know, a lot of the resistance I get when people come on my courses is oh the tech stuff is terrifying I'm like it's actually not it's actually black and white most of the time rather than copywriting which is so subjective and how do you know if you're being creative and warm and have the right tone of voice so yeah the the clever copywriting school is primarily there to help copywriters be better copywriters and you know giving them skills but also teaching them the business side of it as well because often a lot of creative people are terrible at doing practical business stuff um and yeah, there's a directory and there's a job board and all that kind of good stuff so that helps them get jobs. But I guess it's a bit different to things like Fiverr and Freelancer and Upwork because these are copywriters who actually need to <laughs> make a living and, uh, and pay their mortgages. So they're not charging like $7 for a blog and things like that. So um, I like to think that they're reassuringly uh, expensive. I mean, they're not expensive, that they're, they're the same rate as probably a good you know, there's all ranges, but good designer, a good developer. Um, but you're not going to get your five dollar, you know, uh, writer who's spinning copy out of wherever they are, Azerbaijan. It's it's more like <laughs> it's more proper writers who've done like writing courses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think still though. I mean, there are, obviously is a requirement for if someone's doing guest blog posts, they really don't care about the content, and that's where they'll turn to Fiverr or hire a writer some garbage like that because it's just for a link reason uh, link reasons but obviously if you are looking to build a business build a brand or whatever you need someone that knows what they're doing and that's where people like the, the folk that are on your um community would mm. stand out like a sore thumb so <clears throat> just for anyone listening as i say i've never been in your community personally but are are people from the outside able to go somewhere so we can say I need a copywriter, um, you know, for, you know, two months worth of work. I need, you know, a couple of websites written up and researched yeah. and all that. Um, yeah. So where do we go for that? Yeah, it's it's the, the URL is www.cleverCopywritingSchool, quite a mouthful, .com. And then there's a little job board at the top. So it just says, are, are you looking for a copywriter? And you can find one there. But I'm going to, I just want to say something there about the whole guest blog thing. I mean, I, I think if you are putting content, you know, obviously you want to get your content onto good sites not crappy guest blog I mean I don't know but you know if you're trying to write a guest blog for a good high authority website where people actually are going to read it and and you know it's not just going to drive the link it's going to drive eyeballs and traffic and possibly get shares and build your authority and your brand it needs to be the best writing possible like the writing I do on my own website is kind of like me at home in my pajamas the writing I do for guest blogs when people haven't met me before and won't forgive my little idiosyncrasies that's my kind of fully dressed up with makeup on kind of writing so you know I I think it flows all the way through because you know uh, uh, more and more search is all about having a personal brand it's getting so hard to be found for what you do so I think you know it translates across everything you write so yeah I think you're all going to have to get into copywriting one way or another (laughs) or find a good (laughs) person you know do you agree though like yeah yeah yeah, no like uh, yeah I 100% agree like obviously for what you do and, and the kind of quality of your work you know, you don't want that to just be on some garbage website and buried, you know, somewhere down there just to, you know, pass some link juice. You want it to be a good article, well written, that obviously drives traffic and everything else too. You know, that that's that's all good and well, but, you know, the reality of the situation is sometimes people are working within a budget, um, mm-hmm. you know, for a client, for example. So can you really afford that high? It, you know, it all comes no, down to it. I agree, yeah. And that's... Um, that's a big problem, isn't it, with the rates that that um, SEO companies 
charge, people are always questioning them. And it's like, well, what could you do for a thousand dollars a month? Do you know what I mean? How many brilliant articles could you write for that? Because I know I couldn't write very many. So yeah, I totally agree. It's all, it often comes down to budget. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously with, you know, if I had won the Euro millions or whatever, I would have all the best writers and the best everything. Um, but, you know, as I say, clients, as, as well you know, don't always give you the best um, budgets to work with. And as I say, sometimes it's the content that has to suffer. Um, mm. so I, one way or another, regardless of what way you look at it, something's going to be suffering, whether it be lack of customer service, lack of reporting or, or something, if you're going to expect to, to get things done for peanuts. But I think that's obviously a debate that, that could go on and on and on, regardless of whether it's content or whether it's anything else. Um, budget is important. But other than the the content community that you've got, um, you do a lot of speaking. And obviously, I want to speak to you about that because that is the area that I follow with interest with yourself because um, you're trying to build a personal brand. You know, I've done the same or trying to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, when you see others that are doing it round about the same kind of time and stuff and, you know, probably – you know, we've probably been doing it for a few years now, speaking and whatnot. Um, it's always good to see how the other person's getting on. Um, and I seen you were at the Sam Rush Awards in Australia, and you won an award for something. Yeah, I've got a big community on online, um, a Facebook group called I Love SEO, um, and I won it for that community and the, and the kind of the support that I give, not just through that, but through the podcast. And I do events and. A lot of it focused more at people who are at the very start of their SEO journey, you know, people who are really are frightened of it. So yeah, that was exciting. I'm not I'm not sure it makes a huge amount of difference, but it was nice to be acknowledged and to stand up in front of my peers and say stupid things on stage. So it was that was nice. Uh but the speaking, yeah, that's something I'm quite focused on. Um and it is a challenge. So yeah, I'm I'm up for talking about that. What should we <laughs> what should we talk about? <laughs> So for me, obviously speaking, um, a lot of people think you just waltz up on stage or, or you waltz onto your videos or waltz onto your community and everything's all happy, easy to, you know, it seems very easy. Um, but obviously there's massive time problems with speaking, obviously traveling, making slides um, and all of the kind of other stuff that, that goes with it is not as easy as it looks from the outside looking in. Um, so how are you finding all of that kind of stuff, doing that on top of your day-to-day, you know, community management and, and you know, whatever else you do? Um, so how do you, how many speaking events are you doing? And do you never just feel it dropping down like you're knackered? Like, because I know I've done so many. Um, and I was in India, of all places, last week um, for two days and... I'm just now like, geez, you know, it's 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 hard work. Would you agree? Yes, I would. Um, look, I've got so much to say on this. I'll I'll try and keep it short. So, first of all, you know, I did an awful lot of speaking gigs about two years ago, partially to break through kind of any imposter syndrome. Um, you know, it's quite intimidating standing up in front of a room of your peers and especially talking about SEO because it can be quite an argumentative space where people kind of want to one up you and question your you know experience and authority. So, I did a lot of events to just push through that and 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 just go, you know, it doesn't matter. I I can do this. It doesn't matter what other people think. So that was, I did 37 events in one year. That was huge. Then last year I did a few less, um, but a few more overseas ones. And that's huge because Australia is a very long way away from everywhere. So I did, I spoke at YoastCon in the Netherlands. And then about three weeks later, I spoke in a, a copywriting conference in New York. And I was done in because as you said, it's the stress of putting the slides together. It's the travel and then it's the jet lag and it's the recovery and all that time away from your business. So I look at speaking as almost a bit of a luxury. It's not something I could do when I was, when I had clients. It's only something I've been able to do now that I'm fully moved into passive income and I have a team that can manage things while I'm away because you, you know, you lose a whole week. Um, and so you really do have to weigh up whether that 40 hours of working time and more that you've lost is worth the opportunity, you know, if you, especially because in the early days you don't necessarily get paid or get your travel covered, you know, what are you going to get out of it other than showing off? So it's, it's a big, it's a big, to- it's challenging. So yes, I, I agree. It's a lot of time and a lot of effort. But for, you know, obviously 
you've taken that challenge, you've put yourself out there. And as you say, a lot of people don't realise that at the start of your, your speaking journey, you're not being paid anything. You know, it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate your skills, your knowledge, build your brand and potentially win some custom, um, you know, from, from what you're saying on stage. Um, do you think doing that has been a success for you as a business? Absolutely. I mean, the year that I did the 37 events was the year that my income also tripled because I'm quite <laughs> stubborn in that I won't do paid ads. Um, I'm going to experiment this year, but I've never done paid ads because I kind of feel it undermines the message that everything I do is through organic SEO and content marketing. So, you know, I have to get my name out there. I have to do this brand building in all different ways. You know, speaking is one of them. Um, so yes, it's been huge. And, you know, if I go and speak at an event and even just one person buys my big course, that's, you know, a couple of grand. So that covers some of the expense, if you see what I mean. So the return on investment is there. It's not as a clear a return as an investment. But I think, it, obviously, as soon as you stand on stage, people have to look up to you. And it just makes you a thought leader. It separates you from your peers. Like, there are a lot of people doing what you and I both do. But why do I know the name Craig Campbell? Because, you know, he's speaking on SEM Rush things. He's going to events. He's got his podcast. You've elevated above you know, lots of other people who are probably just as good as us, if or if not better, but we are just put, making a name for ourselves. And it does kind of snowball, you know, you get offered other opportunities. And, and also, let's be honest, it's incredible fun a lot of the time as well. So <laughs> I, I have friends and, and family members who don't know anything about this industry, by the way. My, my, I keep telling people this story. My dad actually thinks I fix computers. He doesn't know what SEO means, and yeah. I'm not going to continually attempt. But <laughs> always seem, you always seem to be on holiday and travelling and drinking beer and all this stuff. Um, but it's uh, it is a whole lot of fun in getting to network with you know different people from different cultures, and, and you know even again like I was in India last week, and what a nice friendly bunch of people those yeah. guys are. Um, you know, very welcoming, treated me very well. And uh, it's great to see these places as well. So I think it's, it is a whole lot of fun. But also on the flip side, for anyone looking to build a brand and, and you know, Cape Tune is now a brand online, whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> it, it's something that you, you've worked hard to achieve. And it's not just a case of flicking on your video and sitting in your pajamas or you know, talking about content or talking, you know, ranting and raving about whatever it may be. Um, no, it's not it's, quite it's that a lot easy. Of, it's a lot of work. And I think people don't see the, as you said, they don't see the behind. And another thing um, that I think, you know, you've got a young child and I've got a child. A lot of the speakers that I meet on the circuit are either single men or men who have wives who are willing to look after their kids or they don't, or their kids are grown up. So being an being trying to be a speaker and speak overseas and be an active present parent is really really challenging. Do you know what I mean? So again, I think things will get easier for me as my son gets older because I'll be able to. I've taken him with me to a few conferences because I'm just like, hey, you want me? He's coming too. He's going to sit in his corner and play on his iPad, but I can't keep leaving him at home. You know, I don't want to. Um, so that's been a challenge challenge as well so you know it does not come without effort and it does not come without compromise and I think people don't necessarily see that they just see the drinking beer bit uh, which is yeah. fun <laughs> that part's always fun but I think I've taken my son to probably 95% of my speaking events in a uh, yeah, It'll get I think, harder when he gets to two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been all right so far. He's actually got a brand of his own. A lot of people are like, oh, here he is, the famous man himself and stuff. So, um, but really, I'm not trying to build a brand for him. But no, nah, it's good fun to be able to travel and see the world with your kid if that you know time allows or yeah. uh, circumstances allow. But uh, I'm enjoying it. But one thing I do want to talk to you about, <coughs> um, about building a brand and all of this exposure you get online is the negative side of things. Um, mm. Obviously, I have seen some of the stuff, you've probably seen some of the stuff that people say about me or whatever it comes to as well. Um, uh, the, the crazy insults and the crazy um, stuff that goes on. Um, I just want to know how, like, I, I've had it and used to take it very personally because, you know, my brand is me and. Uh, 
if someone's insulting you, then obviously you're going to take it personally. How do you, you know, do you find that easy or is it something you still struggle to come to terms with or how, how are you finding that side of it? Um, look, in the beginning, it was incredibly hard. Um, we all get picked on for different reasons. And in the early days, I was one of the very few women in a lot of the communities. And I'm also, I'm a curious person, still am. Um, you know, so I like to ask questions, but often asking questions and showing that you don't know everything about everything makes you look a bit weaker. So people would kind of prey on you and go, oh, you know, you call yourself an SEO. Why are you asking that? And I'm like, because I kind of know it, but I'd love to hear your opinion because you're an expert and I'm open to being better you know I think you're always learning um but I got a lot of stick in the early days for that and some really quite nasty comments about my physical appearance and you know just nasty nasty stuff um over time it has got easier and what you know I think one of the ways it's got easier is you know we've had little chats offline about this you know there are really nice people in our industry who are willing to kind of reach out and go you know hey it's all good um and also after a while, you're just like, it's so your problem. You know, like you're sitting there at your little keyboard, probably in your underpants, ranting and writing me a nasty email. Get a life, you know. So these days when people do it, I screen grab it and share it as social media content. And I'm like, thank you. I don't have to think of a post today. You wrote my post for me. Um, so it doesn't hurt anymore because I think my conf in the beginning, in the early days, you're like, is it true sometimes? You know, like, am I clueless? You know, in the early days, of course I was. Um, and it's digging into your own feelings of imposter syndrome and lack of self-worth and self-confidence. We all have this. But then over time, you get more confident. And I'm fully up here saying I do not know everything about everything because SEO is a huge topic. One of the reasons I have my podcast and talk to clever people like Craig Campbell is so that I can get all his brain out and learn a new thing. But I think, yeah, it gets easier. I still sometimes have days where I feel intimidated by it, especially when it goes to things that I can't do anything about, like how I look or things like that. Um, then it's challenging. But yeah, it gets easier. I think. No, I just it was I was always curious to know, and obviously, as you say, we spoke offline about it um, in some instances. But it's always good to hear how others deal with it, and mm. if others actually take the same offence as I was taking. You're sitting there going, "Geez, you know, it's hard to let go and and stuff like that." But I think for anyone out there who is willing to speak, expect it, but don't take it too personally. I think you just have to. Uh, you have to ignore it. It's that whole line of don't don't wrestle with a pig. You'll get muddy and the pig enjoys it. You know, every, every time I've bitten back, every time I've tweeted back to the person who's tweeted me the negative thing, it's never ma it's made me feel better for one second. And then I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. If taking the moral high ground is so much better because what all these people want is attention. And so by ignoring them, it, 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 ignoring them is very powerful. So that generally that's what I do these days, um, yeah. unless I'm having a dark day and then I become a keyboard warrior myself. But that's not very often. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I'm still prone to the odd blown, blown up and having a rant myself now and again, but <laughs> it's normally block and move on and laugh at it. Yeah. Um, and in most cases, I think that's the best um, scenario rather than fighting. Because uh, I think I spent about two years of my life fighting with people online and people yeah. had this impression that I was some kind of maniac. Um, <laughs> so, but I, think, I think as well, though, you know, people like you and I, we, we, we don't, we're getting a tiny percentage of, uh, of it. When I went to YoastCon, I saw what the likes of Yoast and, and Ran Fishkin and the kind of abuse that they get. And it's daily. It's daily. And uh, Ran Fishkin's wife, Geraldine, the things that people write to them and every single day getting that criticism, I don't know how they deal with it. So I count myself lucky that I get as little as I do as well. Yeah. No, it's industry-wide. I think we, we do have one of the bitchiest industries in the world yes, um, i'm glad you said that <laughs> um, you know my mates go like is, is this like seo thing that you go to is it not full of geeks and you know guys with mm. anoraks on and, and you know uh, guys that are just sitting there with their computers or whatever they, you know my friends have this yes. thing that it's all just geeks that don't talk and don't you know, wouldn't even make eye contact um yet the reality is it's it's you know uh, free for all and uh yeah it's a weird 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 industry it really is 
Um, you, don't but, get, you don't get this level of bitchiness in the copywriting industry, for example. People aren't, you know, having fights on Twitter over whether you should use the Oxford comma. You know, it's much more civilized. Um, so I don't know why. I don't know why it is either. There is a real mix of personalities in the in the SEO world, and the geeky ones. It's almost the mon- mon- minority when it comes to events and things because maybe they don't want to turn up. But yes, it's peculiar. Um, I'm glad that you've acknowledged that as well because I think it's very yeah. strange how bitchy it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can't really talk for conferences in Australia. Um, what are they like over there? Obviously, you run your own conference, but you've obviously attended others. What's the conference scene like in Australia? Is it? Uh, I mean, you've been to Yoscon and you've been to America and stuff like that. Is it? As it's just so much smaller. It's just smaller, you know. And obviously, it's a big deal when we get someone coming over here, you know. So, you know, if we can get like Rand Fishkin or Cyrus Shepherd or someone like that to come over, people are pretty excited uh, because usually we have to leave the country to see kind of that caliber of speaker. But yeah. I think the um, Australian market is really improving. You, we, there's a conference that you're coming to in February that we're both speaking at. That's that's exciting. And um, there's another one that I'm speaking at in Melbourne. And there's another one called Click Engage Convert that's launched in October. So there's more appearing, which is good. Um, and then there's a, a, bi- a big one that runs here every year. They're just smaller. and But the thing is, I think we're building our own little group of, of celebrities now. So people aren't so desperate to go and see such and such at, in the US. Because I've been to a few US conferences. I went to, to Social Media Marketing World. Mm-hmm. And I think there were 5,000 people at that conference. And I just found it overwhelming you know i mean it was some of the content was great but it didn't feel like a conference it felt like being in a city of speakers you know uh so it's cozier it's cuter it's smaller and it's getting better all the time um because we're building our own sort of little circuit of great speakers and people are willing to come all the way from it's you know it's not a bad place if i say hey craig do you want to come speak at my event and you're like oh in sydney harbour well sure (laughs) okay twist my arm you know so we're getting more people coming yeah it's um that's uh it's it's weird that you see obviously going back to what you said there in terms of the social media conference you were at with five thousand people what this is just a personal preference of mine but i think talking in front of say 150 people um at a much smaller conference is a lot better and there's a lot more value in it because you can get to know some of the people that are in the crowd and you know when you network after it you know that you get to talk to people properly. Whereas if you go to something, for example, you know, the 5,000 people or whatever, no one really talks to each other and there's no real value. And I think at most of these conferences, the value is when, you know, not just what people are saying on stage, but obviously the networking side of things. So personal preference, you know, I think the smaller conferences are a lot better because you then can spend a bit of time talking to people that are there and obviously learn yourself because I'm sure again you'll agree even though you speak at conferences you probably still pick up a hell of a lot while you're at these conferences Um, yeah my game so, yeah, totally. I, I agree with you. I love the smaller conferences. You know, most of the best bits of a conference for me are not the after party, not just because of the booze, but because of who you get talking to um, other speakers and just people there. It feels more intimate, you know, especially if it's a two day thing, like by day two, you're like, hey, Bob, how are you doing? It's it's nicer, you know, um, the bigger conferences, I guess, look, it depends why you're speaking again. You know, a lot of people, you know, they want to be able to put that logo on their website. Say, I spoke at, you know, SMX, I spoke at whatever, you know, reach that wider audience. I'm not quite there yet, I think. Um, and maybe I'll get there, maybe I won't. But it's for me, as you said, it's less of a numbers game and more of a, a connection thing, I suppose, which yeah. sounds a bit woo-woo. But yeah, I'm, I agree. Uh, it's weird, uh, you know, as I say, I've spoke, I, I find it, um, I, I don't really care where I speak in terms of size of the audience. I don't find it any more difficult speaking in front of a thousand or, or five thousand or whatever. But um, as I say, I just like the whole personalised thing. But mm. going forward into two thousand and twenty, what what is in store for you? Is anything going to change in terms of new developments, or is it going to be much more of the the same? Um, with much, what you much, just do? much more of the same yeah I'm trying to maintain as you said you know I've got three podcasts I've got two digital marketing memberships I've got the big courses I run and the conference it's a lot to just keep all of that 
all those plates spinning. I'm launching a, a, a mastermind for copywriters, which will be interesting, like working closely with a very small group for six months. So that will be interesting. And I'm, I'm writing my next book, which is called Be More Shark. Hopefully I can just mention that, <laughs> which is all around fear in business. So some of the things we've talked about today, like fear of handling competitors, fear of handling criticism, fear of speaking. Um, so those are my two big things. But other than that, um, yeah, I'm coming back to Yoast again. They've asked me back, which is nice. And I'll be in the UK in June and hopefully maybe seeing you in, in Edinburgh or something. Uh, so yeah, a bit of travel, a bit of speaking and just keeping on, keeping on, I think. I think, yeah, no, I think definitely we can do something in a uh, Edinburgh, whatever, it'd be good to do an event. Uh, yeah. But for anyone out there who obviously listens to you and thinks that you're just a copywriter, obviously with the conversation earlier today, uh, well, it would have probably been yesterday if I'm guessing that it's <laughs> early morning for you. Um, but there's obviously more to you when you do offer help, you know, with small businesses and, and you know, problems within businesses and you help iron all that stuff out. Um, and obviously these things are not often thought of, you know, you're not think you're going to, you don't think you're automatically going to go to your copywriter. Um, well, I think uh, the thing is, I, th I think I was a copywriter like six years ago, but since I launched the big SEO course, I mean, my background is, you know, uh, production and I built websites and, you know, I did SEO for like American Express and, you know, big brand, <laughs> pedigree chum. That was a fun one. So I was an <laughs> SEO, uh, uh, you know, I was a copywriter for a bit. Then I went into SEO solidly for five years. And then when I went freelance, I kind of did a bit of both, but my passive income streams, my SEO side of the business is four times as big as the copywriting side because mm -hmm. copywriters just don't have the budget to spend a lot on memberships and courses and things, whereas small business people are willing to invest. So yeah, it's a mix of mix of things. I, I you know, my, I'm, I'm tall in two. It's like, I've got two babies and I have to keep looking after one baby and look after another baby. Um, <laughs> And then I'm now, as you said, I'm moving more into just general business advice because obviously once you've done a course, a membership, you've spoken, you've run a conference, you have podcasts, you've had, you know, done all these different things. People are like, how do you do all of that? How do you automate? How do you scale? How do you employ staff? How do you increase revenue? So now I'm actually talking about super grown up business stuff as well. Um, and that's probably the direction I'm, I'm, I'm going in, like, you know, becoming more of an overall digital marketing person than specifically a copywriter. I haven't had a copywriting client in four years, um, ah. but yeah, I gave <laughs> them up. It's great. No clients. I just have 8,000 people on my courses instead. Um, <laughs> but I, yes. <laughs> I regularly see at uh, conferences and stuff, and I was speaking in Milan a few weeks ago, and people keep sending me the picture of a slide where it says one of my first slides was, fuck clients. Um, <laughs> Uh, I totally get where you're coming from with that. It's uh, it's nice that you've been able to swivel um, yeah. and make income through another way other than reporting and begging and singing for your invoice, uh, for, for your yes. invoice to be paid and all the other stress that comes from dealing with clients. And I, I think that that's a good thing to see. And obviously seeing you being able to grow into speaking um, and everything else. And as you say, you, you, you you know you can offer a lot of value around fears around business and obviously common small business issues like scaling up hiring VAs or you know employing staff or whatever you know you've been there you've done it um out of curiosity um on your own business you know do you have a I know you'll have a team of some description but do you use remote employees or do you have employees um that are sat in Australia in an office? Well, it's been a thing because, again, I've been super resistant about employing anybody because I used to manage a huge team at an agency and everyone cried every day and it made me stressed. So I was like, I never want to employ a human. So I built up gradually. I, I, have, I have remote VAs, but they're Australian, um, and I have about 30 or so hours of, of that time. I also have a, a VA in the Philippines for about 20 hours a week. Um, but I work from a little hut in my back garden, so I've never really wanted to have loads of humans in the hut with me. It's not that big. But I've recently employed someone two days a week to work with me here. I also have remote editors, accountants, bookkeepers, graphic designers, three WordPress developers, copywriters, but they're all subcontractors. So I like yeah. that because 
you know, it feels like, like if any minute I decide to give this all up and become, you know, a yak herder in the mountains, I can just say, yep, I'm done. And I'm not ruining anybody's lives. You know, they can all just move their focus to other clients. So it's a bit of a mix. And I never want to have a giant team, I don't think. I think uh, it's a smart way to work. And, you know, I stupidly set up an agency and had staff and all that crap in the past. And it nearly killed me. And I'm not joking. So stressful. So stressful. Um, so, yeah, no, I totally, I think what you're doing is a really cool and modern business model where you can dip in and out if you felt like chucking it all and doing something else tomorrow, then yeah. so be it. So, no, I think what you're doing is really cool, really smart. Um, where the That's hell do you great. think the VAs, though? That is the point. I- oh, it is so hard. You have to kiss a lot of frogs. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I... The VA that I found that's just amazing, I'm going to mention her because she'll love being mentioned, is Leanne, Leanne Woff. She is amazing. Um, and, you know, she's a good personality fit because she's not me. Because a lot of people go out and try and hire themselves. Like, she's not me. She has different skills. Uh, she's much more kind of anal and detail focused and sort of practical, whereas I'm a bit more of a creative kooky type. Um, the VA in the Philippines, you know, I've been through a few. Um, and I'm, you know, the VAs on Upwork, a lot of them will say they can do stuff. Like I'm great at WordPress and then they can't even upload an image. Um, so yeah, you have to invest time and you have to, you know, my opinion is that the first three months you are just purely investing in them. They're not going to make you any money at all. They've got to learn the job. Um, and you're going to lose money to a degree, but it's only three months. And then it takes after that, then it starts reaping its rewards. And it's hard. You know, sometimes you often do think it was just easier for me to do it myself. But again, the speaking thing made it impossible for, it, for me to do it myself. So I had to let go and let other people do things. And yeah, do them a little bit wrong or a little bit different to how I do them. But it's OK, you know, so that letting go is a big part of hiring good staff, I think. Yeah. No, it's, uh, as I say, it's great to hear you say that. And obviously, everyone else out there listening will hire a VA and go, Jesus, this VA stuff's just a nightmare. Um, But I think (laughs) it's good to hear that you persevere and persevere. And eventually, there is light at the end of the tunnel. um, And you do get some. They never leave. If they leave, I'm doomed. I'll have to do it all over again. So I have to keep them sweet and buy them presents and stuff and try and be nice to them every day, which is really hard. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's not always a good thing to do <laughs> but sadly we are out of time um we could probably talk for hours and hours and hours i'm not sure if people would get sick fed <laughs> up of it but um, but if anyone wants to talk to you about small business or you know get involved in this community that you've got where is the best place for people to find you well, luckily, there aren't many Cape Tunes in the world. So if you head to good old Google and type in Cape Tune, you'll find one of my seven websites. Yes, it's absurd. Um, and yeah, I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. And thank you for having me, Craig. It's been brilliant. No problem at all, Kate. It has been a pleasure as always. And uh, as I say, I'll put your links and stuff at, under. You'll find the links under this anyway um, to Kate's websites. So thank you very much again. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,